Hi and welcome to another episode of Peacemake TV. In today's video in the Essential Lightroom series, I'm going to be taking you through how we can create an effect like I have in front of me. This is a very popular effect by a photographer and videographer called Andrzej Drigan. Now I've probably pronounced his name incorrectly, but you can kind of see what I'm talking about. We've got this really strong high contrast, really shows all the detail and the texture in the face and the image and the cloth and textures and so on. So I'm going to take you through how we can recreate that through Lightroom. I've also got a free preset which is available in the description and on the website so you can download that and try it out for yourself if you don't want to go through this entire process. But let's take a look at how we can recreate this effect very easily in Lightroom. Okay, so we're going to be using this photograph, which I've taken from a stock image library. And it's a great example of how the effect will really work with the skin texture and the, the texture in the hat. That's really where this kind of comes alive. So with this image, we're going to go through step by step and create the effect. Now, the thing that's worth noting at this point is a lot of the alterations we're going to make in this particular process will all darken the image down. So you may find you have to come back through the process and just increase the exposure ever so slightly just to compensate for where we're applying huge amounts of contrast and darkening the shadows and things down. So even though I'm not going to worry about it too much, just remember that when you're working on your own images, it might be worthwhile going back and just adjusting that should you need to. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to give it some serious contrast. So most of what we're going to do to start off with is all inside the basics panel. So we're in the develop module and I'll open up the basics panel. Like I say, if you need to adjust the exposure, you can do that at any time. But first thing we're going to do is we're going to give this a serious amount of contrast. So we're going to bump that up to around 50 or 60. And as you can see, as we do that, we really start to get some serious contrast in the edges of the skin and in the shadow areas. So we're already really starting to sort of punch things up a little bit. So now we're going to move on to the highlight shadows, whites and blacks. So the highlights, I'm going to bring those right the way down because I'm going to flatten the image out ever so slightly. And as you can see, like I said, this is already starting to darken the image down so we can compensate should we need to with exposure. We're going to take the shadows and we're going to pump those right the way up to flatten the image out. And you can see that really starts to punch the contrast out in the image. So next up, let's move over to the whites and let's just take those down ever so slightly. I don't want to go crazy with this. Probably around 30 to 40 should work nice with this image. That's looking good. And the blacks, we're also going to do the same. We're going to bring those down, but a little less. Probably around 20. Between 20 and 30 should be great. Let's go with 25. So you can see we've already brought out a lot of that texture in the image. Now next up, we're going to move over to clarity, vibrance and saturation. And we're going to start to adjust those. Now, if you're not familiar with clarity, then you're going to find what that does is really enhance the contrast between the shadow and highlights. So it's really going to make those edges pop out. We can get a sort of pseudo HDR effect with this. So let's just take that right the way up. And as you can see, as we do that, we start to get a crazy amount of contrast between those edges. and It really punches out all the highlights and the shadows in the image really does make a big difference. If you find that looks a little too much, then by all means, bring that back down a little bit. And I think I'm going to take it down to about around 75, I think is going to be a nice compromise on there. Vibrance, we're going to just punch that up ever so slightly because the natural tones like the greens and the blues, they'll be affected by this. And then when we desaturate, we can just sort of take out all the color while still enhancing those key, key, uh, key colors. So let's just take that up by only a small amount, maybe 10, 15, somewhere around there. That's looking, yeah, that's looking good. But we're going to take the saturation down, so we're going to just desaturate the image ever so slightly and bring that down by about minus 50. Again, this is all to taste. Actually, let's take it about minus 35, I think, is working for me. It's working quite nice. So you can see we really have an incredibly powerful image already, and we're already getting a really distinct-looking effect to it. Now the next step is purely optional. You may find that it'll work with the image. You may find it actually just makes things a little too harsh. But let's come down to the tone curve, making sure that we're in either of the modes. It doesn't really matter because we can choose from the presets. So it doesn't really matter which version you're using. But when we've got the point curve, and it says linear. If you click on there, we have three options and we're going to choose medium contrast. Now you can see what that does is that just makes the darker areas just a little bit darker. Now, as I said, this is purely optional. So if you find it's too much for your image, or you just don't like it, by all means, just leave it on linear. So next up, we're going to go in and just add some sharpness to the image. So let's come down to the detail tab. 
and we've got the sharpness and we've got the noise reduction so let's just start off with the sharpening we're going to bump that up quite high we want to get some real sharpness to the edges in there so let's take that up around 100 the next step we've got the radius and we're going to take that up now normally i would suggest you don't go over one pixel but for this example where we want that extreme detail let's just take that up to around two that's really going to help the sharpness pop out and you can see that makes a massive difference to how sharp the image is let's just a and b that that's before that's after so quite a lot again if you find it's a little too much for your image or too much for your taste dial it back down do what you want with it that's fine detail we're going to punch that up a little bit let's take that up to around 60 and we're going to leave the masking as it is we're not going to worry we want it to sharpen all of the detail now if you want to know how to use the sharpening panel and what each of these different options do i've got a video and i'll link that in the description below so you can take a look at that and get some more information on what you're doing with these four different sliders and how they affect the image but for now for this example just follow along with what i'm doing tweak if you need to and next up let's just add a little bit of noise reduction because when we sharpen, we may find that it over sharpens and brings out a lot of the noise in an image, especially if you're working with something along the lines of gig photography or console photography, where you might be shooting at a high ISO, then you may find that the noise comes out and it's not particularly flattering. If you like it, leave it in there. If not, follow along with what we're going to do in this now. So let's just take the luminous noise and let's just bump that up to around 2530. And with the detail and the contrast, we'll leave the detail where it is. We'll take the contrast up a little bit so we can control what areas have been affected around 20 25 should be more than enough and when we come to the noise we'll do the same again so with the color set area sorry so let's just take the color up to around 25 and what we'll do is we'll leave the detail around 50 and we we'll pull the smoothness back a little bit take that down to about between 10 and 20 whatever you think is the best for the image that you're working on so there we go, there's the effect. And the last thing I like to do, and anyone that's watching any of my other videos, you'll know that I like to apply a vignette to my image to draw focus to the, the focal point of the image. So let's come down to the effects section. And all we're gonna do is we're just gonna apply a little bit of a post crop vignette. We're gonna take that down to the left and we'll darken those edges and just pull the, the viewer's eye into the actual face itself. Now, like I said, if you find that once you've done all this, it's a little dark, you can come back up and adjust your exposure if you think you need to. If you think everything is fine, leave it as is. Actually, I think that looks a little bit nicer. So there we go. There's the sort of Andrzej Dragan style effect. So let's take a look at the before and after so we can take a look at where we started to where we are now and how this effect is such a dramatic effect to your photographs. So let's just have a little look at the before and after to see how striking the difference is. So let's just A and B. And there's our original opening image and there's our final image. So you can see quite a difference in the image. We've got a very, very high contrast, punchy, effective image on the right-hand side, taken from what's already a character, characterful image on the left-hand side. Well, I hope you found this technique useful. I hope it's something you can apply to some of your editing in Lightroom. If you liked the video, please give it a thumbs up and hit that subscribe button to be kept up to date with all the new content we add. And if you didn't enjoy the video, by all means, give it a thumbs down. As always, if you've got any comments, questions or feedback, please pop those in the comment section below. We read everything you post and try to answer as many questions as possible. If you do enjoy the tutorials we put out on this channel, please consider popping over to Amazon where you can purchase the new ebook we've released on the Kindle store. Eight Essential Adobe Lightroom Techniques, where we go into detail about different techniques that every Adobe Lightroom user should really have in their arsenal. The link is in the description below and your support is much appreciated. Well, until next time, take care. Yeah.